Greetings, friends. This is Pastor R. Norheim presenting the gospel in sermon and song sponsored by the Lutheran Gospel Out Association, Pasadena, California. It is possible that somebody might ask, what is the purpose of the Lutheran Gospel Hour? If we answer that the purpose is to glorify God and to save sinners, not all would understand. Most of you regular listeners would understand, but we must realize that the Bible is an unread book by many. When some inquirers asked Jesus where he lived, he said, come and see. So we'll follow his example. Come and see. Listen with an open mind and you'll get the answer. King David, we would say, My cup runneth over, for thou hast filled my heart and soul with joy. Joy comes because thou, Jesus, hast come to us and brought salvation nigh, making possible liberty and enjoyment of life for time and eternity. We pray for those in Radio Land who still may be questioning and wondering, What is this all about? Help them to have hearing ears. Blessed are those who have ears that hear, thou said. And so may they tune out everything that's distraction of the devil, the world, and the flesh, and listen with both ears to the wonderful words of the gospel, Christ died for the ungodly. May they hear the voice divine. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
Jesus, and I drank of the life-giving stream. My thirst was quenched, my hope revived, and now I live in Him. Hear His loving words today. There have been so many requests for the song we've chosen for our song of the month that we've prepared copies of words and music to send to all who ask for it. The song is a translation of the Norwegian number Set me so ye ser de Jesus, called Lift Me Up. You may secure your copy by asking for it. Write to the Lutheran Gospel Hour, Post Office Box 1-2, Pasadena, California, in Canada, Box 201, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan.
from sinking sand he lifted me, so wrote another songwriter. And you will agree that's what Jesus did for you if you are a born-again Christian. King David had to be lifted up out of the pit in the miry clay. The Apostle Paul fell down into the dust and the dirt of the Damascus Road and had to be lifted up and brought to the street called Straight so he could see straight and be converted. When Jesus was lifted up, he had no sins of his own, but he carried our sins in his body, nailing them to his cross, that we, trusting in his salvation, might be lifted up to heaven forever. And so our mission is to lift up Jesus for all the world to see and to be saved. Will you stand with us in this mission? We'll be glad to hear from you. The mailing address, remember, is Lutheran Gospel Hour, Post Office Box 12, Pasadena, California. In Canada, Post Office Box 201, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. have sold yourselves for naught, ye shall be redeemed without money. I read from Isaiah chapter 52, verse 3. This is indeed a remarkable word of the Lord, showing on the one side the deceitfulness of sin, ye have sold yourselves for naught, and on the other side the merciful and gracious redemption through Jesus Christ, ye shall be redeemed without money. Sinners sold without profit and bought back without money without price. Israel had sold themselves to heathen ideas, worldly pride, and what they believed would bring them their desired independence. They dreamed of prosperity, but awakened to discover that they were slaves instead of free men. They had sold themselves for naught. How true this is of the whole human race, sold under sin. For, says Paul in Romans 7, 14, the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, sold under sin. By one act of disobedience, Adam sold out as the head of the human race. 
And as by one man sin entered into the world, and so death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned, this is an awful state to be found in, sold out, together with the whole human race. But it becomes even worse when we consider how individuals have sold themselves to sin, Satan, and the world, even after coming to know the gospel story of redemption. Slaves, as a rule, are sold by their masters, but in this case, man sells himself. It's a self-sale by man's own willful choice. Just as Esau sold his birthright, so sinners sell out for a mess of pottage that enslaves them in bondage and sends them forth as vagabonds of the earth, away from the liberty and sonship of the father's house and home, sold out for naught. Now this matter of selling out is not done in one transaction. It is done gradually, selling a little now and a little then. It's like the experience of the prodigal son who one day left the father's house singing, as it were, I'm the master of my fate. I'm the captain of my soul. But little by little he wasted his substance until one day he had completely sold out and landed in the pig pen. This selling of the soul to sin, Satan, and the world begins with a selling out of some of the finer principles of life. A man comes from a pure home. He has never smoked a cigarette, never tasted a drop of liquor, never attended a movie, never stepped out on a dance floor, never held his hands on a deck of cards, never taken the name of the Lord his God in vain, and then one day he is tempted by sin. He is enticed by his companions, blurred by the glitter of the deceitfulness of sin, and under the increased pressure of it all, he yields. Just a little bit, to be sure, but that's all it takes. The prodigal son sold his principles first, and then he wasted his possessions. There's always an inner fall that precedes the open outer fall. One rolling stone is all it takes to start an avalanche down a mountainside that can bury a village. It was one little sin, so-called, in paradise that sold out the entire human race. All it took was one simple question. Has God said? Questioning the justice of God. And then the human race slipped and slid straight down to hell. No wonder Solomon says, Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. Compromise is the devil's key. He uses it cleverly in getting a young man or a young woman to sell out. Just letting go a little bit, so the world won't think you're so narrow-minded. See? Of those bidden to the king's wedding supper, he first said, the first one said, I go to see. The second one said, I go to try. The third one said, I am bound. Now isn't that just the way sinners are deceived by their sinful hearts and tricked by the devil? Isn't that just the way they begin to sell out? First, just go and see. Just look on together with my worldly friends. But that's the first step. And the first step is the most dangerous. The second soon follows. I go to try. And even though you say, I'll try it just this once, you soon discover there's a law of repetition that somehow gets the best of you, and soon you are married to sin, bound by laws stronger than self-effort can free from. You know it's the first drink that makes a man a drunkard. And you that have never taken that first drink... You have a possession worth holding on to, but you who have already begun to sell out, hear the cry of the slaves of sin. Turn back, turn back. It doesn't pay. You will sell yourselves for naught. Judas sold his Savior for 30 pieces of silver. And why? Because somewhere back there he had sold himself before he sold his Savior. You may have sold yourself at an early age. Some begin selling out in the tender years of childhood for a little fun that somehow had to be sinful fun, something that was against God's word and God's will, something your parents did not favor. Your pastor spoke against it. The church frowned upon it. But you did it anyhow. That was the start 
Just a little fling, as it were. You weren't going to keep on doing it. After you'd had your fun, you'd return to the fold again. So you thought. But experience is another thing. Today, you sadly look back upon a wasted past, a sinful past, memories that haunt you night and day. You sold out, first your principles, then your possessions. And what do you have for it all? Nothing. Nothing but remorse and regrets. You have sold yourself for naught. But, sinner friend, here is good news for you. Ye have sold yourselves for naught. Ye shall be redeemed without money. The past cannot be repaired nor restored. That's true. But the, cap the past can be forgiven. Yes, and what's more, it can be forgotten. Under the precious blood of Jesus Christ who died in your stead and brought you back to God, ye shall be redeemed without money. And this isn't a new thought. It's as old as the Bible and older. It's God's eternal plan of salvation. No sooner had Adam sinned than God came and found him, naked and ashamed of himself. Then God shed the blood of an animal, the first blood shed, and made a coat of skin for him, the first type of the Lamb of God, Jesus Christ, who was to come to earth to be slain as an offering for sin, that his righteousness might cover the sinner and make him acceptable to God. Redeemed, O oh, glorious word, of God, O oh, wonderful plan of salvation, O oh, matchless grace that makes slaves of sin into sons of God, redeemed without money. I could never pay the price. My tears could never flow freely enough. My hands could never work feverishly enough. My works could never, never, never suffice. But Jesus paid it all. We are redeemed without money, redeemed by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, who took my penalty upon himself, died the just for the unjust. He took my place, lost, but Jesus found me, blind, but now I see, bound, but hallelujah, Christ hath set me free. Redemption covers my past, present, and future. It is a threefold word, meaning first, bought while on the market. That's true to the Bible story of Jesus, isn't it? While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't wait until we were good before he died for us, for then he would never have died, for man is hopelessly lost in sin and can never become good enough apart from the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Secondly, redemption means bought out of the market. And praise God for that, for it tells me of God's lifting, transforming power called regeneration or the new birth that places me in a new relationship, no longer in the clutches of the slave market of sin. I have passed out of darkness into God's marvelous light. Then in the third place, redemption means to lose, to set free by paying a price. This, this tells the good news that the devil has no mortgage in me. He has lost all his claims. I have not only gotten out of his territory, but I've gotten out of his right of possession. Tis done, the great transaction's done. I am my Lord's and he is mine. He drew me and I followed on, charmed to confess the voice divine. And this praise God becomes a reality when we let the Holy Spirit convict us, first of all, that we are sold under sin, sold for naught. Then and only then do we qualify for justification, for God justifieth the ungodly. It's the troubled soul that the Holy Spirit calms with the glad tidings of the gospel. Peace, be not afraid. Christ died for you. He bought you while you were a slave of sin on the market of sin. He bought you out of that market, and now you are free. There is therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit redeemed without money. Praise his holy name. Lord Jesus, in the closing moments of this broadcast today, wilt thou take this glorious text of Isaiah 52 and make it real to some trusting heart that there may be rejoicing in that heart, in heaven, in the church, in the families round about. For we ask it in Jesus' wonderful name. Amen. <laughs> message today and to your convictions be true there's danger and death in a further delay my friend he is now calling you make room for the Savior today 
make room for the Savior today. If you do in mansions in heaven, make room for the Savior today. You have been listening to a regular broadcast of the Lutheran Gospel Hour, Post Office Box 12, Pasadena. All correspondence should be sent to this address unless you live in Canada or other countries. In Canada, the address is Post Office Box 201, Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. This is Pastor R. Norheim inviting you to tune in again next week, same time, same station.